I've been using the developer preview 5 of Android P on my Xiaomi Mi A1 for a few days now and if you'd like to know how I managed to flash it on my device, I'll leave a link to an XJ thread in the description box below. But here's everything you need to know about the ROM. So let's start off with the design and to be honest, everything feels a bit more colourful. From the rounded quick settings to the super clean notifications, it just feels fresh. The settings now has a bit more colour to it and the lock screen just looks a lot more cleaner. For example, when you swipe up to draw your pattern, the time still shows up and the pattern fades away as you draw and these are the little things that add to that aesthetic pleasure. In the display settings, you now have the option to choose between a light or a dark theme irrespective of the wallpaper, although there's still the option of switching between light and dark themes depending on the wallpaper. I personally do not like the dark theme though, it just is not the emerald black, more like the matte black which to be honest just doesn't look that great. Oh and how could I go ahead without mentioning that battery saver mode now does not for god's sake show those orange bars at the top and bottom, makes such a huge difference to me. Also volume controls are now located parallel to the volume buttons and there are no steps to adjust the volume which means you have more flexibility over the volume output. Also it displays media volume by default which is great and by tapping the button at the top you can adjust the ringer volume between the volume, ringer and mute. At the bottom there's a settings icon which when tapped will take you to sound settings for further tweaking. Now let's talk about gestures. The Mi A1 has capacitive buttons but they aren't backlit in this ROM. So I just disabled them and instead enabled on-screen navigation keys by flashing a Magis module. Either way, all of the details will be in XJ's red link down below so you can refer to that for more info. Although note that you need to enable the swipe up on home button gesture to access that pill like home button and the different navigation actions. You can find that under the system gestures tab. So you swipe up once on the home button to access the recent tab, scroll right or left on the home button to access different apps, quickly swipe right to jump between two of the most recent apps and swipe up once more to open the app drawer. Although you can still long swipe on the home button to directly access the app drawer but that just isn't natural and you need to be intentional about long swiping on the home button when you want to access the app drawer. Overall, I love gestures, it's a really quick and fun way to access different apps but uh, swiping twice on the app drawer is kind of a deal breaker for me. Oh, and if Google is going the gestures route, then why does this still have a back button? Come on Google, just replace that with swipe left or the home button. Cool, so let's talk about a couple of features that this ROM comes with. And to sum it all up in just two letters, it's an A and an I. So there's something called adaptive battery that limits certain apps that you don't use frequently from draining your battery life. And then there's adaptive brightness that adjusts brightness accurately by learning your preferences for brightness levels at different locations. Both of these features aren't mind blowing but definitely great to have. Oh and another feature that we still strangely haven't found yet in this latest final beta release of Android P is digital well-being. Hopefully we'll see it in the final release of Android P starting with Pixel phones. Let's now talk about animations and they really add to the aesthetics. It just feel really good and snappy, be it the app opening animations or the animations when navigating across different settings options. And finally let's talk about the performance, bugs and battery life of the Mi A1 after I flash this ROM. For the few days that I've been using it, navigating through the UI feels really smooth as though I'm using a pixel. However, it doesn't stack up all that well with gaming. I just played a match or two of PUBG and it stuttered quite a lot but that by no means is a benchmark to test the performance of a smartphone. It might have been a problem with the in-game settings I used and I really didn't test out the performance all that much yet. When it comes to bugs, I haven't noticed a single annoying bug or force close yet and considering it's a developer preview, it's pretty great. Talking about battery life, it's pretty solid. I managed to get a whole day of use with 23% of battery still remaining with a screen on time of 6 hours, which is pretty good. Either way, I'll update you about the performance, battery life and bugs of the Mi A1 after having used it for a few more days. So check out the comment section of this video. Either way, that's been it for me this video. If you're looking to flash this ROM on your smartphone, once again, check out the XJ thread. There are a link in the description box below. And if you have some other smartphone that's supported by Project Treble, then I might be adding a few more useful links in the description box below. So check that out. But that's been it for me this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.